Anime Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi slice-of-life anime called Frankenstein Family. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Each family is unique, but just how unique can one's family get? Well, whatever the answer to that is, it's got nothing on Tannis' family. A young boy named Tannis is on his way home, bringing some groceries with him. A dog accompanies him, and when he arrives home, one of his grocery items falls out of the bag. Suddenly, the dog transforms into a human and catches the item before it hits the ground. Tannis thanks his brother Snow, and as they approach… What? Oh, the human-turning dog? Yup, that's Tannis' brother. Told you his family's unique. Anyway, as they approach the kitchen, a girl with insect-like features greets them, saying that she's starving and asking what it is they will be eating. She's Isley, one of their siblings. While reading a book in the corner of the living room, their older sister, Suishi, says that it's sweet and sour pork, making Tannis exclaim for her to stop reading his mind. Isley says that she doesn't want vegetables and demands that he make it all meat. Next up, we have Ashise, who's opening the curtains, and as soon as the sunshine hits her, flowers grow on her head. She's basically a living Snapchat filter. Does anyone even use Snapchat these days? Anyway, Ashisa tells Tannis that today's sunlight tastes like strawberries. Amidst the carousel of absurdity that is his siblings, Tannis remembers the day their mother and father were arrested. The two were mad scientists, and they considered their kids as human guinea pigs. Tannis was the only exception. He didn't realize it until they got arrested, but keeping a household, it's complicated. Suddenly, he spots a cockroach in the kitchen. Isley sees this, and her animal instincts tell her it's her prey. She goes on full hunter mode, wrecking everything that comes her way and making a mess out of the house. The cockroach ultimately gets killed by a bug spray, courtesy of Suishi. Since Isley has destroyed all the ingredients Tannis was going to use for making dinner, the youngest son, who acts like the sibling's guardian, suggests that they all go out for dinner. At first, some of them were reluctant to go, but in the end, they all gave in. They arrive at a restaurant, where their tea is delivered swiftly to them. Snow asks Tannis what the water is for, and he explains to his siblings that you use it to wash your cup before you drink your tea. Suishi reads Isley's mind. According to her, the stuff about washing the cup before drinking tea is annoying, and Isley defends herself, saying that she bets she thinks the same too. After ordering their food, Tannis could not help but grin. He says it's the first time they're eating together like an average family. It's almost like a dream. As soon as the food is served, Snow transforms into a dog and starts greedily eating whatever is on the table. The other customers notice this and wonder why there's a dog. Isley uses her other hands to touch the food, which is still hot. She spits some kind of toxin on it and vigorously uses her insect-like hands to eat. More and more does Tannis grow aware of the other customer's attention on them. So he snaps at his siblings. He stresses the fact that they aren't in the lab anymore and yet they aren't even trying to be normal. Isley gets pissed at this and snaps that they aren't normal, so why should they act like it? In the middle of this mess, Tannis recalls a memory from back when he was little. He met a man sitting on a tree branch who asked him if he's never been out of there. This man told him all about the outside world. Tannis shares that ever since that day, he had wanted to live in the outside world with all of them, his siblings. He contemplates that, in the end, maybe he was just being selfish. In the wake of his brother's words, Snow, who's now half human and half dog, tries to pick up the food using chopsticks. When Isley calls his attention, he claims that his dog side isn't handling the atmosphere well. Besides, he's always wanted to try using chopsticks. Ashisa also tries to use chopsticks for the first time and comments that they're much more complicated than she imagined them to be. Pleased to see them trying, Tannis cheers them on, saying that they'll get better with practice. No matter what life they try to make, they'll never stop being who they are. That is what Tannis thinks. The ruckus at their table has now died down and everyone else is struggling to use chopsticks except Suishi and Tannis. When the unusual siblings finally take a bite of their food, they all think it's delicious. Isley even calls for another round. Since they're still struggling with their chopsticks, Tannis introduces them to a fork, making Isley exclaim that he should have told them about it from the start. When they finish their meal, Tannis recalls some memories he shares with the siblings. These bring tears to his eyes, and Isley asks if the bill was so expensive that it made him cry. Tannis replies that he just remembered some things. Tannis' siblings are what you would call modified humans. They've all been gifted with special abilities according to their parents. When Tannis was younger, he would correctly answer complex mathematical equations, shocking his teacher. It got to a point where his teacher even said that she no longer had anything to teach the little genius. His parents were proud of him. After being praised by them, he heard laughter from his siblings playing outside. He looked through the window and asked his dad why the others aren't studying like him, and the man explained that their bodies have been modified to grant them special abilities. But that meant that they weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. His mom asked him what he wants for dinner, and Tannis replied that he wants to try eating some milk pudding. But as he's suggesting to let his siblings have some of it too, his father cut him off. That won't do, he said. They're still in the middle of an experiment. He also added that they cannot risk the experimental data being affected. Back to the present, Tannis reprimands his older sister Isley, saying that she can't just go outside on a whim. Isley retorts that a little shrimp who can't even hunt by himself doesn't get to boss her around like that. He then pulls out a medicine bottle from his bag, asserting that if she has to go out, she must drink her medicine first no matter what. 
Isley doesn't like what he's saying, and as the two argue, their other siblings just watch. Isley says that she's had enough of Tannis' rules, and he tries to convince her that it's all for her sake. If she keeps doing this, things might take a turn for the worst. He also adds that out of all of them, he's the only one who knows about the rules of society. Tannis has been outside before. He's met many people, and he's smarter than all of them. He's also the only one who does things around the house. So if Isley wants a nice, peaceful life, then she has to listen to what he has to say. The other siblings take Tannis' side. After their argument is over, Tannis goes out to buy some groceries. Snow offers to go with him, but Isley tells him to leave him be. In the end, he goes off alone. At the grocery store, he is mentally debating whether to buy something or not. A girl who appears to be around his age sees him having this dilemma and approaches him to ask if he's buying. Startled, he can't even think of a reply. The girl then gives him something that she got for free. Tannis is modest enough to say that he can't possibly accept it, but the girl insists. She opens the thing, which appears to be gelatin dessert, and feeds him. Though he's flustered, <coughs> Tannis opens his mouth and lets her feed him. After this brief and awkward interaction, the girl leaves him, saying goodbye. Tannis ends up taking the dessert with him. As he's walking home, he's too caught up humming along and enjoying time all alone that he gets lost. See, for all of Tannis' merits, he isn't infallible, and his biggest flaw is he's terrible with directions. He recalls that whenever Snow was with him, he was always the one who led the way. Now that he's alone, he has no one to rely on. Still, Tannis wants to prove himself to Isley that he can make it home alone. He tries to get back to the best of his ability. Unfortunately for him, he encounters an angry dog and gets chased by it. Meanwhile, his siblings are playing a board game back home to pass the time. Three hours have passed and still, he isn't home, which is unusual since the supermarket is close to where they live. Snow goes out to look for him and Ashisa follows. Isley tells her he'll just yell at her for going outside once he gets home, and to this she replies, but we can't just forget about him, can we? Suishi also volunteers to go and look for their youngest sibling, but Isley holds her off. The two are left alone to wait for the others. Tannis is now in the middle of the woods, unaware of where he is. He recalls that when he used to get lost, his siblings would come looking for him, no matter where he was. He needs to figure this out on his own. On the other hand, his siblings are now all outside looking for him. Ashisa and Snow encounter the dogs Tannis ran into earlier, but they easily fend them off. Now all that's left for them is to look for their youngest brother. With all of them now outside, Suishi uses her mind-reading powers and says she could feel Tannis' presence just below the cliff. She suggests that only someone with strong physical abilities could reach the place where Tannis is at. No one but Isley could do it. Isley beams at being mentioned as the only one who could get the job done, so she enthusiastically goes into the woods to look for her brother. A few moments pass, and still, she cannot find him. At this time, Tannis is already starting to feel tired from walking around all afternoon, and it is now getting dark. As he rests his tired little feet, Isley appears before him. She's obviously very worried about him, but is too proud to admit this. She maintains that she's already getting hungry. Tannis is relieved to see his sister. He gives her a tight hug, and it takes her a good few seconds before she pats his back and reassures him. Finally, they reunite with their other siblings, who are left alone on the road to wait for them. Ashisa asks Tannis why he was playing hide-and-seek in such a place, and Suishi replies that the stray dogs caught him off guard, and he fell down the cliff when he tried to run away. Snow asks him if he's scared of dogs, and he replies that he's not scared of him when he's a dog since his brother's nice. The siblings finally arrive home, and Tannis proposes an alternative to taking the medicine whenever they go out. As for Ashisa, she just needs to cover her face with some makeup. Isley can cover the marks on her face with some makeup too and wear a backpack that hides her spider-like arms. Indeed, Tannis is a genius to be able to come up with these things. One morning, Tannis informs his siblings that he's going to the mainland the next day to meet up with an acquaintance. Isley says she's never heard of some acquaintance from the mainland. Ashisa asks who it is and whether they know the person too. Tannis reveals that it is his old home tutor. Isley questions what business he has with his old home tutor, and he replies that he thinks what they need the most right now is a dependable adult willing to lend a hand. Snow asks if he's going alone, and Tannis thinks of who among his siblings would be the best fit to be a companion. Suishi volunteers that she'll be going with him, and everyone is shocked to hear this. The next day, on the mainland, Tannis is in awe of the big city. He's about to go and check on some stuff, but Suishi holds him back, saying that if he keeps that up, he'll get lost again. He says that she usually hates going outside and asks why she came with him. She replies that him dying would be a bother. She asks him if he knows the way to go, and Tannis starts trying to ask random people, but they all ignore him. Who knew the mainlanders would act like this towards him? Of course, not all of them are cold enough to ignore a young boy needing help, but it seems like everyone Tannis has approached doesn't give a damn about helping him, or at least listening to what he has to say. An elderly woman talks to Tannis and asks him to lend her money for a taxi fare. He is about to lend her some when Suishi tells him not to, revealing that the old lady was a con artist. She offers to teach him how to ask for directions. He shouts his question in the middle of a crowd, and Suishi reads the minds of the people who answer his question in their heads. Easy peasy. After that, she leads him to the correct place based on the information she's gathered. He observes that she really knows how to put her powers into good use. They arrive at a train station. While boarding the train, Suishi prevents a pickpocket from stealing her brother's wallet. The city is just completely different from what Tannis expected. When the two finally arrive at their meeting place, Tannis's old home tutor is already there waiting for him. His 
His old home tutor asks what happened, and he finds it hard to respond honestly. She invites them both to find a cafe where they can talk. Once they've settled at a cafe, Tannis starts mentioning that their parents were researchers that performed experiments on his siblings for some program and that their parents were taken away by the police. She asks why they would come to her, and he replies that it's because there aren't any reliable adults around that he can think of. True enough, the siblings are all kids, and they have to survive on their own. It must be tough. Much to their surprise, she replies that she doesn't think someone like her would be of any help. The tutor says that she's sure he's already forgotten, but she still remembers it clearly. She recalls that Tannis once complained that lessons were boring, saying that the problems he had to solve were too easy. He rudely asked her if she could teach him something he didn't know. The tutor was reprimanded. She was told, can't you even teach an eight-year-old? So much for graduating from some big-name university. If this is too much, you could always teach at a kindergarten. She tells Tannis, I, of all people, an elite among elites, had to get a taste of pure humiliation what genius! You're a modified human, aren't you? He replies that he's different. The tutor now changes her demeanor into a threatening one and tells him not to look down on humans, even calling him a good-for-nothing Frankenstein. She tells him to just go to the government since he's gonna make a good guinea pig. Tannis is petrified to hear this. The tutor even called them monsters. Suishi, who has been listening silently all along, now speaks up, saying that they should leave, and urges Tannis to come along. Before they could ultimately walk away, Suishi asks her, It's the third one now, isn't it? Your boyfriend, I mean. The tutor is shocked to hear this. Suishi adds that the two before him dumped her because of her ego. But even someone like her has at least one best friend. She tells the tutor that her best friend lives not far from there. Finally, she warns her that if she doesn't do anything to harm them, then they don't intend to do the same to her. She calls her Miss Kindergarten Teacher, and the two siblings walk away. On the boat ride home, Tennis tells Suishi that she knew it would turn out that way. She says that the tutor is the same as the people in the city. Tennis asks her why she didn't say anything sooner and wonders if he's really a genius. Those words from the tutor really got to him. Suishi assures him that he's a genius, but he's still just a child. Tennis ends up crying. When they arrive at their island, the girl who gave him the food at the supermarket walks by and calls his attention. He thanks her for the other day, and the girl introduces herself as Sumire. He is about to introduce himself when he remembers the tutor calling him and his siblings monsters, so he uses a fake name. Canis. Smart, but not that creative, huh? She gives him her number before walking away. Suishi then comments that she's genuine in her intentions. Tannis was right. No matter the kind of life they try to live, they can never stop being who they are. But in the end, maybe they don't have to stop being themselves. All that matters is that they're out of the lab now. They can start living as themselves, and not just as experiments, not just as their parents' children. It's tough having an eccentric family, but as long as they're together, they'll work it out. After all, they're family. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.